So notice how many values we're going to have to find. We're going to have to find the grand mean, and that grand mean is shared in all of our cells. So we only have to find one value there. We're going to have to find two values of A, A1 and A2. And we're going to have to find two values of B, B1 and B2. Notice any time I wrote B2, it is simply redundant. So B1 and B1 are the same value, and B2 and B2 are the same value. Similarly, A1 and A1 here are the same value, and A2 and A2 are the same value. So, so far, we have Y bar dot dot dot, A1, A2, B1, and B2. So five terms so far. Finally, we have four different values for AB. AB11, AB12, AB21, and AB22. So it looks like we'll have nine different values to find. Now, the geometry of this factorial structure will come into play. So there won't actually have to be nine different things we'll have to estimate. But we'll see those as we move forward with finding each of the terms. Let's start with the first, the grand mean. So y bar dot dot dot. Well, that's as simple to find as simply taking all the scores and adding them up and dividing by the number of scores we have. This is simply the grand mean ignoring the model completely. In these data, the grand mean for the 80 observations was 741 seconds. So I'll put that value at the top corner. That's going to apply to all of the different cells. Next, let's find the offsets associated with factor B. That is, the B sub 1 and B sub 2. To find these, we're going to have to find the overall mean at 8 a.m. and the overall mean at 9.30 a.m because the offsets for B will relate to how those means differ from the grand mean of 741. So what we're looking for is the marginal mean, that is the overall mean at 8 a.m., y bar dot dot one, and the marginal mean, the overall mean, at 9.30 a.m., so y bar dot dot two. Notice in the notation even, we're ignoring factor A. We have the additional dot there to show we're averaging over the different routes. Now we already saw these means before. In the factorial plot, we found these means by simply ignoring the different routes. Recall that we found this line by simply looking at the midpoints between at 8 o'clock the different routes and at 9.30 between the different routes. So these means are really just ignoring the different routes in our model. So 757 for the overall average or the marginal mean at 8 a.m. and 725 as the overall average or marginal mean at 9.30. So let me add these in at the bottom of our table. And we really do call these the marginal means because they're at the margin. Now offsets in general are simply the deviations between a group mean and the overall mean. So in this case, the B sub K's are simply equal to the marginal mean for each of those K groups, so the Y bar dot dot one and Y bar dot dot two, minus the overall grand mean, the Y bar dot dot dot. Let's not get lost in the notation here. We're using the notation to be specific, but in essence, we're just asking how does the overall mean at 8 a.m. differ from 741, and how does the overall mean at 930 differ from 741? So we can do the subtraction, and you'll see that B sub 1 is equal to 16. At 8 a.m., it is 16 seconds slower on average than the overall grand mean. And notice at 9.30, it is 16 seconds faster. That is, these values are yoked. To the degree that 8 a.m. is faster or slower, 9.30 has to be the opposite. This is enforced by the geometry of the factorial structure. Notice that the grand mean is formed as an average of these two means. So to the degree that one is higher, the other is lower. Let's explore this graphically. Let me add the grand mean in. Y bar dot 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 is 741. Notice the degree to which Y bar dot dot one, the mean at 8 a.m., is above that line, 16. The mean at 930 has to be below that line there is a pivot point in the structure. To the degree that one of these means is above and one is below, the other mean will be simply the complement. It'll extend in the other direction exactly as far. So these B sub one and B sub two values are not independent. 
In fact, they have degrees of freedom equal to k minus 1. Remember, degrees of freedom are simply a measure of how much independent information there is. So if I told you b sub 1, you can immediately tell me what b sub 2 is. They are statistically dependent perfectly. So the degrees of freedom honor this fact. There's only one piece of information here. It's the degree to which either one is differing from the grand mean. So as we go forward, let's keep track of degrees of freedom. We spent one parameter, or spent one degree of freedom, in estimating the B terms. All right, let's consider now factor A. Like we did before, to find the offsets, the A sub J's for factor A, we'll have to consider the marginal mean at Gilman Drive, Y bar dot one dot, and the marginal mean at La Jolla Village Drive, Y bar dot two dot. Now, like we did before, we can see this by looking at the factorial plot. Remember, when we found the marginal mean for the Gilman Drive versus La Jolla Village Drive group, we simply ignored the time of day effect. We found this by looking at the midpoint in the factorial lines. Remember, the average at Gilman Drive or La Jolla Village Drive is really just the average of the 8 o'clock and 9.30 observations for each of those different routes. So ignoring time of day, we simply have the marginal average. Y bar dot two dot is 804, and Y bar dot one dot is 678. So we'll use these means to find the values of A1 and A2. Let me put in the marginal means for Gilman Drive and La Jolla Village Drive, and let's remember what calculation we'll apply. The A sub J in our model is simply the difference between the marginal mean for each of the different routes minus the grand mean. So for Gilman Drive, we find this to be A sub 1 equals to negative 63. And as you might guess, A sub 2 is simply the opposite of that, positive 63. Like we saw for factor B and the B terms, these A terms are also yoked. To the degree that one is above average, the other has to be below average. Seen graphically, the degree to which A1 is negative here is the exact same degree that A2 is positive. Again, the grand mean is simply an average of these two, so the amount that one is above or below the mean is the exact opposite for the other mean. So in reality, we have two numbers here, but we only have one degree of freedom. There's only one of these values that is really independent. So our degrees of freedom are j minus 1. Again, degrees of freedom are simply keeping track of how many independent values we need to calculate. So on our a terms, we actually only spent one degree of freedom. So going back to our model, so far we found the offsets associated with the average effect of route and the average effect of time of day. We have one final component the ABJKs, a component that will capture the degree to which there is an interaction, the degree to which we have to reference one factor when talking about the effect of another factor.